Hello, JPU family. Welcome to another episode. Today, you are going to get a weekly roundup. Here goes. So when you hear the PNP attack on a bad mouth. Everyone in this city can be saved. And them have everyone in this city can be saved. When I'm talking about spark program. Can be saved. I'm talking about them have poor package that them international tender. Lie. They don't know who are they. The contract they are in. They don't know me a prophesy say that Chinese company get a contract. Me a prophesy that that is this financing for the Labour Party in the upcoming election. Corruption. Somehow, it is as if they forgot that they had this government for 18 and a half years. And when they had the government, the programs that they put in were all riddled with corruption. Right now, I spend most of my time trying to correct things that started under them that should have been done well. If you had the country for 18 and a half years, we shouldn't be talking about some of the roads that are still not repaired. We should be talking about some of the water issues that have to be addressed. It's not since 2016 that bad roads start. Most of the people who are complaining about water is not since 2016 that never have the water. And people must remember that. That I, when I take over the government, I am not dealing with problems from 2016. I am dealing with problems that started in the 90s under the PMP government. I want you to listen to the vote. Up to this day, I still have operation pride schemes that I have to deal with where the people are tell me them get land under operation pride, but they not get no light, they not get no road, they not get no water. And biggest thing, they don't get no title. And I have to be dealing with it now as Prime Minister. So I have to deal with the deficit created by the PNP, plus deal with the future development of the country. So when I hear them talk, I just shake my head. Because in opposition, they have all the solutions to the problem. But when they're in government, they cannot implement. Yes, guys, you can definitely tell that election is in the ear. You see the lies Bunting is telling on the Spark program and you hear the Prime Minister's frustration about the lies being told and the expectation that Jamaica should be perfect within eight years since the government took over. Guys, do you see how easy the word corruption is to be used when Peter Bunting, Mark Golden and Omar Davis, what we call the illicit three, the nerve he has using the word corruption when over 44,000 entrepreneurs and businesses went under because of these guys and their illegal criminal behavior and they were never held accountable for it. Talk about corruption. The cost of FinSAC was trillions of dollars, countless People had to go into exile from Jamaica because they were scared for their life. One such person is Dan Crawford, and we are going to do a special report on that here. While Bunting is calling the Spark program a con, Miss Lisa Hanna met with her constituents to discuss the Spark program and the roads that need to be worked on. The constituents came out and I think she said here that over 70 roads were identified. Yes, that's what she said. And not patching, but actually paving. So if you read that, you will see. Guys, the disinformation is in high gear. But thank God, majority of us are on the side of truth and righteousness. Increase in lawsuits against political figures. But experts believe it's time the country's leaders promote what they preach. Trisha Gay Kelly reports. 
Works Minister Robert Morgan was sued by former Federal Bureau of Investigations FBI Special Agent and Attorney Wilfred Rattigan in February for alleged defamatory comments made online. Then in June, People's National Party President Mark Golding threatened to sue Deputy House Speaker Heroy Clark over statements allegedly made about Golding's wife. Other cases among the political class have emerged in recent days. The latest State Minister for National Security Juliet Cuthbert Flynn's attorneys have threatened to sue PNP Vice President Ian Hales unless he apologizes for posts to his social media. The attorneys pointed a profanity-laced audio clip of his client from years ago that Cuthbert Flynn feels is being used now to cause her harm. Former Deputy House Speaker and an attorney believe things could get serious if this trend continues. We are descending into a great deal of unnecessary pettiness and um, character assassination. And uh, this doesn't augur well for the political process because um, followers will take a cue from these politicians and we could descend into not just verbal clashes but uh, physical violence. Smith agrees with Minister of Culture Olivia Grange's appeal for her colleagues to monitor their temper. This follows Prime Minister Andrew Holness's utterance at the weekend that he would no longer remain silent about misinformation and disinformation online. Smith unsure of how the Prime Minister plans to cure the issue without breaching freedom of speech rights suggests that Holness partner with the opposition leader. And I suspect that some of these um you know videos and what have you that have been coming out have been really riling the prime minister because several of them are aimed at him this is what has got to the prime minister and now he's reacting but he should not overreact and speaking of appropriate reactions, attorney at law Michael Williams, though in agreement that a lawsuit is not required for everything, explains no one but the person being impacted by statements made can determine if it's necessary to sue. I can't tell an individual who has a justiciable right that has been trampled on that they must not vindicate their right. It is a matter for them and their attorneys at law. Guys, with the disinformation campaign, there are more and more lawsuits, as you can see. I mean, we've never seen this before. Dayton Campbell was the chief architect of lies and telling lies on people. He alone is facing four lawsuits at this time. And I pray against disgrace. I pray against disappointment. I pray against failure. I pray against embarrassment. I pray against, oh God Almighty, mental disorder. Father God, you're not Related to misinformation and disinformation, there's a lot of talk about um, this area, and I think it's important that we clarify. Um, the administration has always been and will always be deeply committed to protecting democracy in Jamaica. And we are deeply committed to, to protecting democracy from any threats that there are. And governments around the world are dealing with this issue of misinformation and disinformation, especially on social media. And we've seen it. We know what happens. Anyone can say anything and it is amplified around the country and around the world. And it is important that as we protect the rights of our people and protect the right to freedom of expression and speech, that at the same time it is grounded in truth. And so we love the robust debate. And I say it all the time. It is important in a democracy that we can have dissent and that we can say, you're not doing good as a government. We don't like what you're doing, or you need to do this better. That's what a democracy is, and that's fine, and that's what we want to encourage, but not encouraging persons to post blatant lies online that then fuel a lot of this issue of um, disinformation and misinformation. And so it's very important that we understand that what the government is saying is that what is posted on social media needs to be based in truth. And in that vein, what we have said is that where there are issues or instances where we know individuals have posted things that are not true, that 
we will have to go after those individuals in terms of prosecuting them. And there are laws that are available. And I think the goal of everything that we are doing is ensuring that we are in an environment that is based on truth. That is what it is about. And so there is no um, tracking of people. There is no curtailing of people saying anything that is negative. That is absolutely not the case. It's just that we have to protect truth. And so this notion that um, you know we shouldn't go after those who perpetuate fake news is really strange because around the world we see it happening in every country. Fake news is a problem and it's fake, which means it's not truthful. And we are a country that is built on truth and we will protect that in this administration. In terms of the way forward, what we will be doing is primarily focusing on social media um, literacy, and that's important. How do you know what's true? Because sometimes you see these videos and you think, oh my gosh, that sounds right, um, but you're not really sure. And so we will be using um, our broadcasting commission, and they've already independently started to work on a public education campaign that helps our Jamaican people to understand what's true, what's not, how to figure out if something is true, in fact. And, and we will, obviously, as a part of that point to some of you in this room, the traditional media in this room, we will say to them, go to traditional media. That's where you can actually find out if something is real or is not. And so the primary thing we'll be doing at this time is enhancing public education to help individuals to understand what's real and what's not real. And I know I get a lot of questions sometimes on AI. AI is an area that we have to really be looking at because with AI, fake news, disinformation can be even more potent. And so it is very important that we teach Jamaicans how to understand what's real, what's a real video, what's not a real video, um, so that we can have conversations that are based in truth and not based in untruths. And, and so I had to, to say that at the start because it's a, a very important issue that we are grappling with and it's a conversation we have to have as a people. And so I know the administration is happy that we're having the conversation. Um, there are no new legislations at the at this time, we have some that are already on the ta uh, that are already there. We have the Cyber Crimes Act. You know, we have laws around libel. There are already laws that exist and that can be used in terms of prosecuting individuals who do not speak truth online. But before we even get there, the key thing is let us have public education. Let us have a discourse about what's um, what's the right approach going forward. You're asking now that you're transitioning out of politics, having sat in parliament for nearly 20 years, does this mean that you are no longer going to be contributing to your country, Jamaica? And the answer is no. That, that will never happen. I've, since I was a teenager, I've been an activist for my country. I, I believe in my country, I'm Jamaican first. And even though I will perhaps not be sitting in parliament, I will continue to work in the best interests of my country. And that's why I'm doing more work through the Lisa Hanna Foundation with women, with children, not only to help small communities with small water treatment plants and women with you know, mental health assistance and um, several other initiatives under the mission of my foundation, but I will also be traveling and whatever I can do to assist, you know, our people of this country, that will never stop. I mean, there, there, there are things that I do believe in that are sacrosanct. I believe that we need to increase and improve our value chain for export using our agricultural products. I, I, will, I will always say that. I believe we need to increase the purchasing power of our people so that they can live a better quality of life for their children. I believe that we need to solve the mental health issues and the socio-cultural psychosocial issues that many of our people face to, to help reduce the crime and violence in our country. I believe that we need to reduce the kind of femicide, the killing of women through domestic violence, and I believe we need to end the visceral poverty that many of our women face because they just didn't get a start in life. Those things don't go away because I'm leaving Parliament. They actually get accelerated because I'm in a better position now to not only travel and, and leverage my contacts globally, but I'm also able to, to work with both sides of the aisle. 
because I'm not sitting there and, and in, on one particular site to, to have the best change um, going forward. So the answer is no. I, I, I'm not giving up on my country. I'm Jamaican first. I will always put Jamaica first and, and certainly see how all of us as, as people living in this world, as human beings that want the best for our people, will, will continue to work together because we're at a tipping point, I think, globally now that people no longer want this kind of political division and this kind of tribalism. I, I, I personally believe that also both sides need to come together and find what is in the best of both sides and work together in the best interest of moving this country forward. And I hope that's something in my lifetime that I will be able to see. Yes, guys, so the situation is not cute at all. Our politics is at a new low. And if it continues this way, as you heard in the news reports, Jamaica fails. Anyway, guys, make sure you're keeping it locked here to Jamaica Politics University, where you get all the political news, reviews, and updates the best. Make sure you are tuning in to our live broadcast Monday through Fridays at 7 p.m. Jamaica time. And guys, be sure to subscribe, turn on your notification so that you get every upload that we do here on this channel. Tell your friends about this channel. Make them come over here, come hang out with us. See you in the next video, guys. Take care. <music>